write on your paper? Um, uh, they're actually pretty pretty Asian. You've heard that before? Mm -hmm. I wrote, um, no, we are not all identical. I feel like it's unnecessary that they have to put for an Asian. Since I was little, I've been hearing people tell me that I, um, I look like other people who are Asian, or I get the, um, I'm not racist, but what are you? Because it's like, say, Asian women are usually not pretty, because we either have like squinty eyes, or we're like too pale. You, you think that it, after being like a 6th grader in, 20, in the 2010s, you're like, oh, you'll grow up and people will change and it will improve, and then it doesn't, <laughs> and you're like, oh. Again, coming here, it's just, I feel like people kind of lived in their own little bubble. It just feels like this school is like high school again. In high school, it was like, <sighs> it, was, it was just me and white people making jokes at my expense because they felt like they could. Kind of like hiding ourselves and be like trying to conform to their like standards. And I don't think Asian women should do that anymore. Entailed pretty much creating a photo exhibit, uh, printing photos of people of the AAPI community and showcasing uh, stereotypes and you know sending the message of how we should be combating stereotypes. So the whole process was taking their photo, having them hold up a sign that showed a stereotype that most people generalized about them and then for them to also describe who they really are. The process was, was difficult. We were challenged because the timeline was so short. We had to fit everything in in such a short amount of time. You know, my favorite part of the entire experience has really just been, you know, meeting all these new people, hearing their stories, and just being a listener. I mean, you just get to learn so much more about the world through, you know, each person's life. The project itself was certainly extremely impactful for me just to be able to hear so many people's different stories you know we kind of are known to almost accept that these are kind of a reality and that you know stereotypes is just something that that always happens and i think the the real powerful message is to show that hey like that's not okay you know we should combat them and really educate people that stereotyping is just not something that we need my specific stereotype was that I am also Asian because there's several people who tried to tell me I'm not Asian or you're Asian and questioned me. And as someone who's part of the community, you know, it made me feel a little hurt. There are no positive stereotypes. When, when you project something, an assumption of, of a group to an individual, that's problematic. But more problematic, why do you even have that assumption of a group of people to start with, right? Today, we're going to be street interviewing people on the campus of the College of New Jersey. We're going to find out how educated the students are about Asian Americans in media and who Vincent Shea is. Um, so, so far, I've been in the street interview with Steph. Uh, I was going around interviewing the people with a giant microphone on campus and that was really fun and it was really um, interesting to see people's knowledge and to see um, how it varied depending on the person um, and assuming like what their majors were and you know where they're coming from um 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 i literally can't think of any now no i don't think i can yeah off the top of my head now have you ever heard of vincent chin vincent Vincent Chin. I don't think so. No. Vincent Chin. The name sounds familiar, but I, like, no. I have not. No. 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 I don't think so. Vincent Chin. I have not. And one final question. Have you ever heard of Vincent Chin? No. I have not. I'm sorry. Um, Vincent Chin's from 1982, and he was actually killed um, by two white men. He was beaten to death by two white men with a baseball bat in a nightclub. He was beaten to death by two white men by a baseball bat in a nightclub, um, and it was his bachelor's night, so it was literally the day before his wedding. They put other histories like ahead of others like kind of like whitewashing it almost like american history classes definitely try to like 
whitewash. There's a lot of like Eurocentrism. I think like Asian American history is like erasure in U.S. history. I mean, I think it really just comes down to like systemic issues. Um, and especially in a country like this, sometimes there's just people's stories who go unheard. So I took Dr. Who's intercultural communication class in spring 2021. Um, and that's when the Atlanta shooting happened. So I feel like at that point in the year, um, like Asian advocacy was like really large or like monumental. So I felt the need that, you know, I was really taken aback by all of this. So I felt the need to finally step up and speak up. And um, once Dr. Who offered me this opportunity to be part of this campaign, um, you know, I had to jump on it. I couldn't just like be like, no, I'm not going to do it. I met Dr. Who during the um, virtual school year when she hosted a listening session in response to Atlanta. That was a time I really needed some healing and I wasn't able to see it happening in my own community. So I, you know, jumped onto her Zoom call and I shared a little bit about my experiences being AAPI. And since then we clicked. My big project at the moment is the AAPI pop-up exhibit and it's going to be an exhibition featuring artwork, creative writing, and musical work of any kind. And it's going to be celebrating API history, figures, and experiences, so it's open to all TCNJ students. Today, we gather to celebrate the grand opening of the first ever TCNJ Asian American Pacific Islander AAPI Outdoor Showcase. <laughs> Thank you to all the contributors and all the participants to this event today. And if you haven't had a chance to see all of the exhibits, please make, make, make sure that you do. Vincent Chin, by the nature of his identity, was blamed for this, was blamed for the recession. And two men in the same bar thought he was less American than they were. The greatest um, compliment feedback I received during this project is when someone looked at the hate speech memorial I curated and said, this almost made me cry. And that really goes to show, you know, the work we do, it really does touch people, it really does transform their experiences and at the end of the day, or at the end of the semester, we've made TCNJ a, a better place. So currently I'm working with Fox on the Solidarity Mural um, and I'm also working with Kelly um, on our outreach for fundraising um, and getting local businesses involved to um, secure funds to make sure our project runs smoothly. It was absolutely lovely. Um, the turnout was amazing okay. and it was so heartwarming and amazing to see all of our work like come into fruition. Everyone on this team is like really busy but getting everyone together as much as possible um, and like communicating with everyone as much as possible and trying to like get people to like come out to these events and like support Nick's photo shoot or like all of our small sub projects. Just like what it takes to work as like a powerhouse of a small group to get as many people involved in the project. Nicole and I actually run the Instagram. Jamie and I run the Instagram page. So what we do is we um, make posters and Instagram posts about API in the media, API contributions, injustices, and we just post it there just to educate the TCNJ community more. We try to um, post uh, the history of API and and current events that are happening as well as events that the campus or our campaign is running. All of TCNJ is on Instagram so just kind of spreading the message digitally and just having it be more um, accessible to students is what can make this campaign more effective. Uh, Nick's picture might be displayed. Mm -hmm. It's like framed and you have to put it on. Data file. Yeah. I feel like working with this team and the people on this team um, everyone's insight and like their connections and just their individual perspectives and that, like, their passion and how driven they are to complete these projects and you know it's not just like a class that people are taking um, just for like a credit or for like just because it's because they're actually passionate about this project. I feel that mission accomplished so our campaign started with the goal of raising awareness for AAPI communities and members and the debunk the stereotypes and um, really combat the Asian hate. With all what you have seen, this whole, we have walked a long journey through this campaign and this is the finale and it really has presented uh, our, our goal really well. Our students who worked on this project, they I feel like they have they feel accomplished and that is that makes me happy, you know what I mean? Like because they devoted the time and they see the result, they see the impact that they have made to the community.